So just going back to, we need a name for this. Uh, some people are calling it the framework, the drowning prevention framework. Uh, some people are calling it the pinwheel. Um, but I think you all, all get it. We've, we've looked at this a couple of times over the webinar series. Uh, we divided drowning prevention or water safety objectives into five uh, areas. And within those five areas, the, the theory here was that we had to do a forced choice of the three most critical areas in each segment. So for places, we worked out that it was beaches, ocean, rock pools, um, and lakes and rivers, and also aquatic facilities. And, and for the others, it's pretty self-evident. Um, but we recognise that this is a national framework and that it may not necessarily work. Those choices may not apply in every state and territory or in every local government or in every community. So this is very much a framework. It's a menu. Um, it's some choices that need to be made. So that's a segue into our next speakers. Um, I'd like to, to welcome, while we focus on state and territory implementation, first of all, I'd like to welcome Floss Roberts, the Executive Director of Royal Life Saving Northern Territory, and Paul Shannon, the General Manager, Government and Industry Relations with Life Saving Victoria. Um, so let's start with you, Floss. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about uh, what uh, makes you tick and what you're working on. Oh, Justin, you said you was going to make Paul start first. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what makes me tick? Lots of things. But, um, you know, I, am, I work for Royal Life Saving in the Northern Territory and I just have the absolute privilege to lead a team of staff and volunteers and members um, who are just really committed to water safety across the whole Northern Territory. Um, and we just really believe in... Um, preventing drowning. So sometimes I call it water safety, sometimes I call it preventing drowning, depending on um, the audience. Uh, but we, we really have moved that to just creating positive experiences in people's lives because water safety doesn't sit around in a spot by itself. It's, it's a lifestyle. Um, it just sounds a bit boring to some people. So what makes me tick is making that exciting. Um, and, you know, um, doing that in the Northern Territory, it's always exciting. And on a side note, I've got three wonderful sons and a husband who are uh, wonderful men who love doing everything around fishing, boating and outdoor activities. So keeping them safe and, and that is really important to me too. Yeah, and a few, a few of them at least have featured in Royal Life Saving videos and photographs and annual reports and all sorts of things. It's always <laughs> handy to have... Uh, some models in the family. Thanks, Floss. Um, introducing you, Paul. Welcome, Paul. Um, again, just tell us a little bit about um, what uh, what you're interested in. Yeah, well, at, at the moment, um, I'm buried sort of neck deep in, in work while Floss is out boating and fishing and having a great time. Um, current, currently, I'm, I'm working on the Victorian Water Safety Strategy, which, which we're really sort of trying to model off the back of the Australian version um, and we've got quite a unique opportunity here in, in Victoria where, where um, we've got that, well, I'll go back. The last couple of strategies that we've actually put out, Life Saving Victoria have produced on behalf of the aquatic industry for government. Whereas the opportunity we've got at the moment is we're, we're partnering with government to pr produce a water safety strategy for community and the industry. So it's a little, little bit of, of a reversal to what we've had previously. So, so there's sort of a lot of collaborative work going on with you know, up, upwards of about 15 um, different um, entities within government, you know, trying to get each, each of those little touch points tied together to uh, be paddling in, in the upstream in the right direction. Um, Paul, so, so just to explain that model for us again, because I think this is a really key point. I think we all work hard to capture the attention of government and have get them focused on whether it's flosses, water safety or drowning, whatever the language is we use here. Yeah. Um, so this, this approach is different from the previous approach in that um, are we talking cross-government or are we talking whole of society, including other NGOs? Um, we, we're talking cross-government, but, but it is a a whole of entity um, piece of work, but being led by government um, and then Life Saving Victoria is bringing the aquatic industry to the table. So while it will be, um, you know, the engagement piece is with Life Saving Victoria representing the industry and, and then the, the whole of Victorian government piece. Um, 
you know, so we've been lucky enough, well, unlucky in the, in the drowning numbers we've had in Victoria, but, it, but it's really, you know, raised the, the attention of, of, of government and the minister. And it, it's really been, you know, ministerial led that, that government needs to play a, a bigger part and, and is there a particular, like the other challenge for, for drowning is finding a home. Um, so at a ministerial level, where what's the home that you found in Victoria for drowning, for water safety, drowning prevention? Where's We're it being led from? It's being led by Emergency Management Victoria. Um, so so Lifesaving Victoria is partnering with Emergency Management Victoria as the, um, the agency that will pull it all together across government um, to deliver on, on what the strategy strategy looks like. So, um, and that that tying it to a particular area in government, I think, is the absolute key um, to success in this area. And and right down from a state government level to a regional to a municipal um, level is, is absolutely critical to to keep you know drowning front of mind. You know, right through the different tiers of government. Mm. Floss, how, how is um, water safety in the territory managed from a coordination and interface with government perspective? Well, um, we have, you know, from a drowning perspective, we've always maintained the, the highest drowning rate per capita across Australia. So, you know, people in the territory are, you know, four times more likely to drown than um, any other state and territory. So we have some unique challenges. So, you know, in 2002, the government um, launched a five point water safety plan. Um, it came out of the Labor government and Claire Martin at the time and established the Water Safety Advisory Council. So there's 16 members in the council across government and non-government um, organisations and appointment to that council is through a ministerial appointment. And from that in 2003, the first water safety plan was launched um, and that was across, you know, five key areas as well. Um, but, and this one now we'll be going into 2022 as our fifth water safety strategy across the Northern Territory. And I had a, you know, in, when I started, it was like, well, it should belong to one government department. So, you know, I think it might have been within a portfolio that included local government at the time. And then it got changed to Sport and Rec. Um, and, it can, you know, you can try and just level it across one agency, but I've learned to actually be more understanding that it is definitely cross-government agencies. Um, and so the important part is that, you know, the chief minister of whatever the, um, government that's in continues to support the importance of the water safety strategy and also the government departments within that. And then how we work in collaboration to, you know, make a difference and try and prevent drowning um, is the critical point, how we convert that into action because I love a great strategy. There's nothing better than that. But if it doesn't convert to action and engagement and people don't put it into their lives, then I just don't feel good about that. Um, and, you know, it's really exciting that we can come together and look at the learnings over those five water safety strategies, but also where we're at now um, to go forward. And I suppose... I'm really um, grateful that the leadership in government has gone, okay, that was a Labor government thing, we're out, we we're on this. They have stayed committed to water safety is important. So those underpinning um, principles are really important. Yeah, well said. I, I mean, I do think, um, well, you know, I don't think I know, um, highest rates of drowning in the territory, but I, I do think at an organisational level, territorians have to go further and harder to get to the community. Um, and I think the penetration of water safety across the NT community is much higher relative to some of the biggest states actually. So, you know, drowning rates are lower in a big state, but actually um, the, the contact points are also much, much lower. So, you, you know, credit to um, all of the work that your team do. But um, I, do, I do think what you've said there is really interesting that um, the water safety strategy has got to survive a change in government and it's also got to survive and work cross, part, uh, cross sectoral in terms of government agencies. And so you must have some magic there. Is there a way to describe the magic that happens 
um, at um, at a where the rubber hits the ground in terms of the NT water safety plan? What's the thing that binds you all together and committed to that approach? Well, it's definitely not my magic because you know, Justin, I'm a bit of a wild card. So sometimes, you know, I'm good. <laughs> bad. Must be book the barrow, is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the magic, really, to be honest, is the people like collaborations getting thrown on the table like it's gone out of fashion but you know once again if it's not genuine and you know people can't be honest and then talk about it um then you know it doesn't it doesn't and some things won't change or need to change slowly or develop a better understanding so you know that that group of people that come together in the water safety advisory council I mean we only meet four times a year and I say only I mean that's everybody's lives are busy but when we're there we're 100 you know checking in where we're at you know the reports go up to the minister who is, is leading us at that time and you know at the moment we've got um kate warden who's just an absolute um legend in understanding water safety and the importance of what it is to people's lives and also those um you know the most vulnerable people that may never have had a you know water safety growing up and all that sort of thing so you know i think the magic is in the, the team coming together understanding the differences and then you know what are we going to do you know how are we going to get that started um you know i'll give you an example so yeah i hope i don't throw myself in the fire on this one but you know i want <laughs> i want a sober skipper and i want um voting legislation and my sons and husbands don't like me for that and half of their friends don't either but believing in that saves lives around the water um, and on the water. And, you know, other organisations don't believe that because they've got doing other ways to be safe and, you know, all that sort of thing. So having the discussion in the group of where you're at, but also what the priorities are for the dis different organisations and how they can respect the differences um, and all work together for the one purpose is really important. Wow. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I do recall uh, you being caught in the middle in terms of you're very um, correct. And, uh, and I don't think there's anyone on this webinar that wouldn't disagree um, with the notion that we've got to attack licensing and alcohol consumption in, in the boating fraternity. And I think in the territory, it's, it's much more challenging for you culturally than it might be in a state like um, Victoria. Um, so, Paul, um, as you uh, go into the planning of a new water safety strategy, you, you mentioned that you might um, leverage off the Australian water safety strategy. Have you thought about what that looks like and how you might do that? Um, at, at the moment, we're probably still still early stages, but with, with regards to, you know, breaking it down in, into the, you know, those five areas, in particular people and places, you know, I, I think that's a, going, going to be sort of a key starting point. What comes after those two, um, you know, will be what is unique to, Victoria, I think so. So we'll very, very much Victorianise the, the um, you know the, the the context of, of the Australian Water Safety Strategy. But and, and again, it's it's still up for debate whether, whether we use the same framework. But there is a, a strong lean, you know, to that at the moment. Mm. It's well, it's no longer a framework. It's uh, Richard Franklin is suggesting pinwheel, spin wheel, win wheel of drowning prevention. Wow. Water yeah. wheel, water safety wheel. Carolyn's talking water safety whirl. Uh, Jagnall's gone sunburst water safety wheel. wheel. Um, think, so there's I a lot that, of energy. Yeah, the challenge is to tie it to another wheel um, ah, because yes. it, it's, to, it's to, to get it to, to align to a, another framework that's going to be reviewed and renewed and looked at, um, you know, on, on a monthly annual cycle right down yes. to the local level that's going to make it actually... Um, yes. maintain its momentum um, yeah look that's right I, I do think we, we 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 did step back from an implementation plan um, probably because we recognize that this wheel uh, the strategy needs to influence a lot of players without necessarily organize overplaying our hand in terms of organizing so I, I do think if you can um, contextualize the strategy and come up with sort of an implementation framework that would be the next step that that will help us all. Um, good, good point. Um, Floss, we've got. Um, we wanted to give people just a taste of how how the territory prioritises 
key drowning issues that are localised. So we've got a video of one of the campaigns you ran more recently. Authorised by the Northern Territory Government, Darwin. Um, it's a um, it's a really powerful video. Can you tell us about how that how that came about? Yes, um, Justin. One of the the challenges we have in the Northern Territory, um, you know, we we really sort of had two seasons, wet season, dry season. Um, and in the wet season, we you know get phenomenal rains. So we have massive drains, big wide canals, so the water gets bucketed down and exit out um, quickly. So unfortunately, that looks like fun for people to be in. Um, and it's so hot in the January and, you know, those months. So, you know, it looks like fun. People, you know, jump in them. And obviously, some of them are full of rubbish and all sorts of things. So unfortunately, to get to that campaign, we've had um, several drownings of um, mainly young people, but also, uh, um, you know, an older person um, and in in the um, drains. So the Water Safety Council looked at it um, and back then the Water Safety Council was ministered totally by the um, Northern Territory Government. And so they looked at a way of what other um, tropical um, areas were doing and they purchased a, a, a program out of um, the Cairns Council and it was like frogs rock rap dancing and it was a song saying stay out of pipes and drains. Anyway, that was taken out through, you know, um, radio and media and stuff, and it got got a bit of leverage and water safety talks in schools. And then sadly, um, you know, there was there was other drowning from the drains, and so it came out from a, the government. One of the government minister, uh, minister at the time said, "Nah, that's it. I know." And the coronial inquest, like the parents thought that maybe it made it look like fun because it was a song and all that sort of stuff. So the minister at the time said, no, I want something hard hitting. I want to do this. And he set out and um, put in the additional funds to develop um, this. So, you know, it was filmed in with a GoPro and all that sort of thing to bring out um, this next one to really talk to um, be able to put that out to families and to share in the schools because obviously some of these drains are straight out from the schools where the children are walking home from school and all that sort of thing so um, that's where this one this one came to and also the city of Darwin and the city of Palmerston put sponsorship or put money towards this so that there's merchandise to go in there like caps and slap bands so they can really engage with the children to say, you know, to talk to them about and get their feedback around what, what, you know, what are these pipes and drains? Why don't you go swim in there? And uh, and taking that to the classroom and the community events. So, um, and you know, the the good news about that um, promotion is that it can go out to the communities in, you know, Catherine, Tennant Creek, Alice Springs, because everywhere we've got those those big drains and you can't sign and fence everything. So, you know, you can promote where it is safe to swim at and but then also share those messages out so that they can, um, we can try and really target an area to say, we, you know, we don't want any more children in those. We don't want to see them in there. And, you know, when you look at behaviour, like you used to see, you know, um, photos that kids all line up around different drains in the in the January um, school holidays, um, whereas now you really don't see too much of that. And, and it's a whole of community and families sharing that message as well to make the difference. 
Mm, yeah, a, a very powerful communication, and the back the background is important because, um, in some respects, uh, you know, one one communication strategy doesn't necessarily apply across all contexts, and um, I do think there's a pressure, particularly with government's involvement on advertising and advertising approaches. Let's have a look at a Victorian advertising campaign um, and see what, what what how they're looking at this in Victoria. Men over the age of 45 are at the highest risk of drowning in Victoria. Which is why the people you're looking out for should include you. Don't just look out for others. Know the conditions, know your limits. Authorised by the Victorian Government, One Treasury Place, Melbourne. Okay, so I don't know when, Paul, this one ran, but again, similar territory in the sense that it's it's personal responsibility, but it's also talking to family to look after family. Is this a recurring theme in the approaches that you're taking in Victoria? Yeah, it, it's really along the lines of it'll never happen to me. Um, you know, we, we the research showed us that, that men in that particular age, um, you know, that they were worried about you know, their children and their family, but they weren't worried about themselves and, and believed that it couldn't happen to them. And that was really, you know, that, that approach um, taken with that particular ad. Um, and again, that ties in with, um, you know, men overestimating their, their ability in water, you know, which has been pretty consistent um, in the research as well. Yeah, I think in Victoria that you have sort of a reasonable scale of uh, budget for these campaigns. Are these campaigns evaluated? And what, if so, what are the insights that you're getting? And th does that give you an idea of future directions in this space? Yeah, look, the campaigns are uh, evaluated in government. In, in that particular one was, um, was only last season. So at, at this stage, we've got no evaluation on that particular one. But, but certainly there's... Um, the, the focus groups and, and, and the work beforehand gives us a pretty good indication on what we actually need to hit the target. Um, we do have a balance point where government is very keen for us to go the more hard hitting approach, where the industry is very, very wary of turning people away from the benefits of being in on and around water. So it, it's again, finding that, that balance point, you know, it's very much a um, knee jerk reaction. I, I think going too hard hitting um, at the detriment of what what is a, a, a huge industry. Mm. Yeah, that gives us a window into the challenge of the strategy, two challenges actually. The water safety strategy uh, does talk about this standardisation of messages because we don't have a huge budget for advertising campaigns and the like. Um, and we do quite often um, say the same things in slightly different ways. In different, um, in different territories and the like, but there's a little bit of an overlapping population. So I think the water safety strategy talks about trying to come up with frameworks for standardization of messaging in a way that doesn't stifle local creativity and the need for uh, state governments to have um, campaigns that are identifiable as state government campaigns. Um, I guess the second thing you're talking about though is this tension within the strategy of and Floss, keep, Floss comes back to this constantly. We, we, we want to have fun around the water as well. We don't want to um, constantly be talking about killing people's ideas of having fun and being out and about in wonderful waterways. Um, I do think there's a tension there between um, trying to reduce drowning, but as organisations wanting people to be wet and in the water and constantly enjoying it and building their skills. Um, Floss, how do you navigate that sort of tension between... Ooh. I don't think anyone signed up to hear me five times over and over again. I think it's been fixed. Um, but, but I was just saying that the balancing out of uh, talking about drowning prevention constantly, but also pushing that message that there are some fantastic facilities and fishing in the territory is a vital part of being in the territory. How do you, how do you navigate the two? Oh, I just... Um just working with the different groups and being part of their world. So what I realised took me, I don't know, probably eight years that all I kept trying to talk about was royal lifesaving all the time. So just tried to understand more of what was important to their group because everybody's, you know, got a great cohort, whether 
you know, it could be kids say for it might be Somerville or Amateur Fishing Association and mm. instead of coming in as the fun police and put your, you know, stuff on and whatever, just understanding where where they were at and being part of their world. And, um, you know, like my sons were the only boys that had to wear life jackets on their dinghies and, you know, <laughs> they only put them on when they see me coming, um, but, you know, they got them on. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it's just around you can do it, like you definitely can you can do that, but you don't have to just um, be so hard-lined about it that it just annoys everybody. No one wants to have anything to do with that. So, you know, one of the things that we were um, really great to, that uh, took us out of our comfort zone around COVID was like, you know, we we went and got some stand-up paddle boards and we had little community events at some of our water holes that were safe to swim in. And, you know, if we just had a pop-up tent for Royal Life Saving, we'd be begging them to come over, like, come here, come here, you know, whereas we had the stand-up paddle boards, we're like, have you ever tried these? Have you tried these life jacket? And get that there. And people just come in there to try it and talk about it and we weren't saying, you know, going in there. So I just think just to to focus on the engagement, the fun and the understanding and um, and then have discussions with the leaders in their organisation if there is a big problem in that space so that then they can like listen to it from our point of view as well. So I came in really hard and annoying in early days and now it's this way it's had a bit more, um, well, a lot more fun and a lot more understanding and... Mm -hmm you know, don't even have to say the words as much as well about the water safety. So that's the main, that's the main focus. Yeah, like I do, I do, I heard someone say the other day that um, it was about making friends um, <laughs> and it's easier to initiate change if you're friends with groups and people. So, you know, some respects our, our work is about making friends with lots of groups, um, irrespective of their interests and then inculcating them with a little bit of drowning prevention at a dose at a time. So, listen, thanks, Floss. It's been wonderful talking to you. Um, you. Love the territory perspective. And thank you very much, Paul, as well. We're going to move on to the next section. So I appreciate your time.